I'm Anna Parisi, and uh, here I am with Jamie Keddy. Hi, Jamie. Hello. Uh, from uh, the 19th annual TESOL Macedonia Thrace Northern Greece Convention. Uh, so, um, Jamie, well, good to have you with us. Good to be here. Thank you. Now, um, well, one of the things you've presented here this year is video telling. And uh, could you tell us a few things about it, first of all? Yes, Anna. Well, as the name suggests, it's a, a marriage between traditional storytelling and YouTube videos. Well, video rather, video defined by the YouTube era. And in fact, it's a, it's a kind of everyday activity for people. In fact, you video told just yesterday. Remember when you told me about that video of the music video of um, in which a heart comes out of the person My favorite. and sings a song. Ah, that's right. fantastic. And what you did was you communicated a video which had been shown to you into words. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. video telling can be um, thought of as the sort of way of communicating a video which is the opposite or an alternative to the traditional video showing. Mm -hmm. So we've got video mm -hmm. showing, mm -hmm. videos mm -hmm. communicated to people through screens, then put into words. Videos mm -hmm. communicated from one person to another Mm -hmm. into words and that's that's what video telling is effectively mm -hmm. um, and it's an incredibly common thing if you think about the times that you, you, you spend speaking to people you often talk about videos you've seen, clips you've seen, shocking news footage you might have just seen in your lunch break, a slow motion goal which you saw on the television the night before that you didn't think should have been allowed, um, a new music video that you thought was quite funny or a comedy clip or these, this just makes up a lot of, we are creatures of the media and a lot of the, we don't just consume, it doesn't end there, we then talk about mm -hmm. what we've seen mm -hmm. and put it into our words. So video telling mm -hmm. is the language aspect of mm -hmm those narratives which we've consumed through screen. Mm -hmm. But what else is involved? It's not just telling someone else what you've seen. When it comes to teaching, mm -hmm. um, there must be something more involved in it. Absolutely. I mean, that's the inspiration. But what it actually in, in the classroom, it, to think about it this way, when you're watching a video clip, or when you're reading a piece of literature, or when you're consuming any piece of art, there is no passive process in the brain. It would be a, it'd be a contradiction in terms. It's a very, very active process going on there. You're asking questions, you're identifying, you're putting yourself in situations, you're sympathizing, you're empathizing with people. Questions that come into your head or, or, or anything worthy of asking questions is a sort of structure which is taken into the classroom. So the teacher, mm -hmm. rather than showing the video to the students, Mm -hmm. breaks it down into a series of questions which can drive the narrative. Mm -hmm. And students are taken through the sort of experience that they would have had if mm -hmm. they had watched the video just be, right. by being mm -hmm. asked these questions. The questions drive the narrative. But although they're exploring the issues that the video offers, they're doing it blind. They're not actually seeing the video. So the mm -hmm. fact they know Mm -hmm. that there is a video behind this communicative event, the idea and the practice is that it can be quite engaging. And the more students talk about it and explore the issues, the more they want to see the video. And if you can compare it to somebody who has passionately communicated mm -hmm. a video to you, or a book to you, or any piece of art to you, or a cartoon, and then you want to go off and watch it, sometimes the person is description mm -hmm. of it was actually better than the real thing. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> yes. Well, it's the two-sided nature of it. It's taking a piece of video and turning it into a completely communicative event mm -hmm. for the classroom and exploring lots of issues on the way and learning opportunities on the way and incorporating all sorts of learning devices, maybe some dusty learning devices from yesteryear, mm -hmm. such as drilling, such as um, even dictation, translation, anything at all. Once you enter the story, once you enter the narrative of the video, students know where they're, where they're going on a journey of the beginning, a middle and end, and you can incorporate any traditional mm -hmm. language learning device into that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, do you think, well, I suppose that you've done quite a lot of video telling 
yeah, as a teacher yourself. Um, do you think it could be something that instead of being um, teacher-led, it could also be student-led? Absolutely, it's a great question, and that is actually one of the, the goals of, of is for teacher to demonstrate it, mm -hmm. demonstrate how much language, how many issues, and how much thought you can actually get out of one short clip by a few video telling activities students can then be asked to go off and prepare their own video telling activities which they can be encouraged to present in front of the class if they're brave or mm -hmm. put it into writing if they're not this can be as much as, as a written activity as it can be as spoken as mm -hmm. a there's all sorts of different ways and different types of language that can lead to it. It can be critical, it can be purely descriptive, it can be a personal perspective to it. But yes, very much one of the mm -hmm. big aims is for that teacher-led aspect to then be passed on to students and let them become video. Can I, um, can I make a comment on what you just said? Um, you said that it can be used as, you know, spoken, but also written mm -hmm. uh, for the shyer students. But I think that, you know, as a teacher myself, I think that when it comes to shy student, then um, have, you know, students having something that they can use makes them a little bit less shy, you know, like a video, when they present something from a video. So I think that would work very well with shy students. As a spoken yeah. uh, activity, I would hope so. Mm -hmm. I would hope so, mm -hmm. and I would try and encourage students. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, as well as that aspect, you've got the. It's notoriously difficult to get students to present and have their classmates participate. Uh -huh. We know as it's so frustrating to get a student to prepare for a presentation, to go through all of that that prep preparation journey the nerves and get up and talk only to have the classmates, you know, not really listening, paying attention or being very rude and teachers, I mean, we always mm -hmm. have to be going, telling them off for that, mm -hmm. you know. With this, hopefully mm -hmm. if it's a video telling, there can be a very much of a, an engaging mm -hmm. um, aspect for the listener and I hope, if it's done right, a motivation for the listener. Um, if you're told that the task is, I'm going to d describe you a video, and I'm going to, f and I want you to tell me if you've seen this or not before, mm -hmm. then that's a very um, concrete task that can be given to the listeners. So maybe by getting the listeners involved more, that makes the job mm -hmm. easier for the presenter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the teacher could use video telling with younger learners? It's more difficult because what you're doing here, it will for younger learners. The younger the learner, the more visual support they need. Mm -hmm for mm -hmm. language comprehension and, and decoding. If video telling reverses that, it gives you the language first and then everything comes together with the image. It depends on the age, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but as a, in the way that I'm working with it right now, I, 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 I would imagine that it's definitely more tricky with younger learners that need that language support from the very, very early stage of mm -hmm. the introduction to it. So it strikes me that one very, very good um, type of video would be to use in video telling would be advertisements, some of which are very clever or very popular. Mm, yes. Have you, I mean, have, have you seen a, do you have a specific advert that you've seen recently that you're thinking about here just out of oh, interest? Oh, you're going to tell, you're going to ask me to do a bit of video telling then. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, so th th there is one in which it was uh, in a World Cup a few years ago and uh, there was some incredible music um, from uh, somewhere in Asia uh, and uh, then there was a barber and he was shaving a guy's head in the shape of a football. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and I don't know why, it's a very simple thing, it was a very simple video, a very simple advertisement, uh, but somehow everybody, you know, thought that it was incredibly funny. Mm, and it makes it memorable. Yes. So in the video telling, there's all sorts of aspects of that you could, you could explore, mm -hmm. focusing on one aspect. What are the connections that the people that created that clip trying to make in our brains what mm -hmm. is it they're trying to do which makes it memorable mm -hmm. um, and there's all sorts of critical um, 
analyses that we can subject material like that to. Mm -hmm. And the video telling almost presents them explicitly to learners through the telling part, which all comes together through the viewing and encourages them to then go off and look at adverts which are memorable or meaningful to them and take them apart mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, subject them to all sorts of, of, of criticism about because out at the end of the day there's so many people out there trying to influence or persuade us it's very good to break down mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. tools that they use so absolutely adverts would be top of the list mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. here yes now because it's a it's a new idea I you know I guess that uh, teachers we still need some support and some practical ideas mm -hmm. I think you are writing a book on video telling yes mm -hmm. and it's it the book's going to be a multimedia book it's going to be an e-book which contains lots of videos of these activities being done mm -hmm. in the classroom when it's it's um it's not a book about video effectively it's a book more about um Mm -hmm. teaching right. and teacher talk techniques and mm -hmm. teaching techniques and uh, bringing lots of different things together the, the, it's not a book about technology mm -hmm. the technology right. very much takes a back seat sometimes there's no video showing in the classroom sometimes learners go off and do the viewing on their own at the end of the lesson so mm -hmm. it's not to be looked at as a book about technology it could be a book mm -hmm. about how to use mm -hmm. technology but it's much more a book about teaching and traditional classroom dynamics mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and activities. Right, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shannon. Thank you for inviting me to Welcome. Thessaloniki.